Using bent lofted bends, you can easily create detailed physical bends between two parallel sketch profiles, which can be used to facilitate instructions for press brake manufacturing. Here I have two open sketch profiles that I'll use to create a bent lofted bend feature. These sketches are parallel, but non-parallel sketches can also be used to create this feature. I'll go to the sheet metal toolbar on the command manager and click on the lofted bend icon. The lofted bends property manager appears. The bent manufacturing method assumes that the part will be machined by forcing it to bend at a desired angle and shape. This option also lets you specify the facets to create along the bends. I'll select the circular profile and the right edge of the rectangular profile to generate a preview of the lofted bend. For this feature to work, the profiles must both be open sketches and no more than two profiles can be chosen to create the lofted bend. Also notice the sketch profiles don't need to have smooth connections between the sketch segments, unlike the formed option. The faceting options and facet value group boxes allow you to choose the parameters for how each facet is measured and what numbers are used to define it. The chord tolerance, number of bends, segment length, and segment angle options can all be used individually or in combination with one another. Under facet value, there is an option to refer to endpoint. When this option is checked in, the active faceting option will take into consideration the points that exist on the ending profile of the loft. In this case, the endpoints are the vertices of the square profile. I'll go ahead and make sure this box is checked for all of the faceting options. The chord tolerance is a measure of the maximum error between a curve and the line that approximates it. This means that if I were to increase this value, you can see that the loft up to the circular profile has less segments to define it and is no longer close to a perfect circle. The number of bends option determines how many segments will appear for each of the bends. I can increase it to add segments or decrease it to remove the segments. The segment length option allows you to specify the length of the bend segments on the profile. Notice that if I increase or decrease the value, that the number of segments changes to accommodate the chosen length. Finally, the segment angle option allows me to define the facets with an angle between the adjacent lines of the segments. Like the other options, I can set this option to any value I like, and the number of segments will update with the chosen angle. Keep in mind that although all four of these options are available, they cannot be simultaneously used with each other. Instead, only a single option from this group box can be active at a time and the preview of that active faceting option is the one that will generate when the loft is complete. I'll choose to define this facet by its number of bends and set the number to 8. I'll also make sure that refer to endpoint is checked on so that segment transitions at sharp corners are taken into account. The faceting options and values set in the property manager apply to every bend that's indicated by a pink dot in the preview. To adjust these options for individual bends, I can just click on a corresponding pink dot and use the faceting options dialog box that opens to make adjustments. For this particular bend, I'll set the faceting options to number of bends and give it a value of five so that each segment between a vertex and the related portion of an arc will contain five bends. To finish up, I'll go to the sheet metal parameters group box and make sure that the override default parameters option is filled in. Instead of the defaults, I'll make sure that both the thickness and the bend radius are set to a value of 8 tenths of a millimeter. I'll click OK, and the bent lofted bend feature is formed.